Don't change the channel. Don't you touch that. Second Samuel chapter 24. And I want to read one verse, just one verse, and it is actually verse 1. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 1. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. The word of the Lord for the people of God. You can take your seat. Well, we are on the year theme, Kingdom Defenders. And we are on the series, continuing, Kingdom Design, the Life and Legacy of David. And today I want to minister from the sermon topic, God's Numbering System. God's Numbering System. I begin. Church, let's face it. <laughs> The world today is fixated on numbers or the numbering system. Banking institutions quarterly release their numbers, might I say the usual increase in their financial portfolio, all the while the regular consumers are getting less and less. Insurance companies the same. They yearly increase their fees and thusly increase their bottom line of gain while the consumer struggles to maintain this insurance just in case. This is the fair factor of being insured. The stock exchange is monitored daily as investors watch to see whether or not their investments end up in the positive black or the negative red. Frankly, you name the institution and that place monitors the income and the positive dividends and looks to see that they end up with more than they began with. Hence, why we have auditors and accountants attached to businesses. They can serve as an advisor to the company as to where their finances are being gained or lost. They will watch the numbers pattern. The world spins on numbers. Check out any place during the lead up to an election. There will be data collected and analyzed in order for the political entity to make a decision on what their next move should be. Check what I want you to get here it's the immense amount of trust and faith placed in numbers. Come on now. You know you look at numbers, get your paycheck, you look at the numbers, you, you see what's going to happen. You have more month than numbers. <laughs> I will further add that we now live in a time in a Bermuda when one will make a decision not based on morals, but based on the numbers. Indeed, the power of money has become a god, small g. And it is this factor that then becomes the factor that shapes a society. I don't want you to miss that. Exam companies. It, it started at least 20 years ago when the numbers were dangled before the eyes of the Bermuda public so that what mattered more was how much money. Don't miss that. Now we're a society shaped where actually a small minority wants something, but if they've got numbers, dollar bills behind them, they can do attention. In any case, now this is where we would use this scripture right here. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Come on now, how they got that airport rape deal? I, I know, yeah, yeah. You know, still, they're still talking about it. 30 years, giving away everything, everything. <laughs> I have a feeling something under the table happened, but let me get it right here. <laughs> For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. When you leave faith in God and choose to follow the money, the end product of your pathway will be many sorrows. Yes, you got more money, but we got less morals. Yes, we can still buy what we want, but our children are unfocused. Yes, we can drop the money here and, and fly and travel and, and buy this and buy that. However, the moral compass of the society has decreased.
Now your standard is not the care of others, but the gathering of money so that others really don't matter. Here's a quote. The root of the money tree yields the bitterness of fruit. I, I promise you, if you do all you do for money first, you're going to get a bitter ending. Uh, 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 pastor, are you saying we shouldn't make money? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I knew as soon as I was having my first child, whatever, when they are born, I got to so devout their mind so that they don't become a part of a plantation. <laughs> you don't want me going to that today, and if I had enough to cop match, I should leave that alone. No, 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 I'm going, I'm going to trouble it. I, 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 you see, we may not have the cotton fields, but there are some job places that are just the modern-day cotton-picking fields. And I had to train my child, train my children with a mindset so that they wouldn't be at a job they can't stand and they're not making money and my hands can't meet. Simply put, let me tell you this. God's word encourages you to understand that you will either follow the money or have faith in the word of God. Wow. Now, church, be clear. God has a problem when you choose facts over faith. <laughs> God is expecting that his people, I said his people, his people always choose his word, yeah. that is, faith in his word, and that it ever stands overstands the facts that the world throw your way. Oh, the world will throw it your way. You, how are you talking about every week trying to tell the people to tithe? Oh, Lord Jesus, huh? What you mean, 10% and some of us more? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of program semen got going down there? But can I tell somebody that since I started tithing at the age of 15, that I've never been begging for bread. I've never been forsaken. I've always been taken care of. God has always made a way. Uh-huh. God honors his word to perform it. Don't you listen to the world? They're out there struggling. I don't see nobody around here starving. Problem is, we're doing a little bit of hefty weight around this place. Every time you look snacks and birthdays and cakes and this, pastor bringing muffins, because she knows nobody's all got vegans at home, nobody gonna eat them, so she force feeds the church. <laughs> Nobody's stopping around here. <laughs> so let's, let's take a look at what God thinks about this, the world's numbering system, as we look at the following three. Points. Point number one, left to your own demise. Left to your own demise. Point number two, left to your own decision. Left to your own decision. Because we're smart, you know. And point number three, left to your own demonstration. Left to your own demonstration. But let's begin. Point number one, left to your own demise. Mercy. <laughs> How many times has a mother regretted leaving their child unmonitored for five minutes? You come back, they pull the clothes all out of the drawers, empty the detergent over the kitchen floor, gotten themselves in the toilet. I don't even want to say nothing else right there. Got to the Vaseline and smeared it all over their head and face. Gonna take you about five dollars in baths to get it out. Well, five minutes. Understand, it is just as dangerous to leave a child unaccompanied in the spiritual. Look at this, verse one. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and He moved David against them to say, "Go number Israel and Judah." Now, why was God angry at David? Why? As I studied, you know, looked at some commentaries, there were various reasons that they gave, you know. No one was quite convinced to why, as to why. So I had to say, let me dig in this thing here. So I looked at the first verse of the scripture. All my preachers in training are paying attention. I looked at the first verse, and the first word is and, A-N-D. This tells me that I need to look back at what this and is attached to. And, and what? And what? 
Now, church, you will recall that the last chapter left off with David naming or counting 37 of his mighty man. Shabbat. The more I thought on this, the more I understood the disappointment of God in David. Enlisting his man, his mighty man, and in highlighting their skill, their strength, and even how God used their skill, David did the unthinkable. The more he talked, Lord have mercy, the more he talked about the man, the less he talked about God. You take what you have to see, see it's out. When he first started, he was all into it. Oh, this person, oh God, helped him. Then he just starts listening. <laughs> so here, here, here's a word to you, here's a word to me. That no matter what God does for us, be it one thing or 37 things, that just like you give him glory in number one, you give him glory in number 37. Huh? Don't, don't ever become so accustomed to God doing things for you that you take it for granted. But every time, stop and say, thank you, God, for that. It's just like this morning, God, thank you for the rain. God, thank you for the seedling. Thank you, God, for the, the benefits that come from you. In everything, give. All right, all right. So look, David ended up merely listing the last 21 men. He just listed them. And then most likely to add to the disappointment of God, this blows me away, David lists Uriah the Hittite as the final honorable man. Uriah? The husband of Bathsheba? The one you had murdered? The nerve of David. You got to watch how you try to sneak in a blessing. Huh? You got to watch, watch at how... You, 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 you gotta watch how you try to watch this make something that was dishonorable honorable. You you gotta watch how you try to rewrite history. You think God forgot? And here's Uriah, such an honorable man. God was like, no, he did not. No, he did not. Oh, you like counting, Dad? But you like counting now? I'm trying to put you in the mindset of him. I'm sure the heart of God here nerve of David. David is caught up in the numbers at this point and this leads us to chapter 24. Anytime you place more emphasis on numbers rather than God, you disappoint God. You know, I, I can recall, I'm telling you, it's a temptation. And what to, oh, how are the numbers today? How many people in church? I had to learn at the beginning and then when crops left, I had to learn Maria don't number the people. God doesn't like when you place your trust in the things you see. God doesn't respect you. And so I understood, all right, the numbers are what they are, but understand this, that when you trust God, when you have faith, when you have faith in God, that it doesn't matter what number you have, God will give you what he has planned for you. Ah, isn't that why we celebrate church? That we're not as big as maybe this church and maybe that church, but God does big things for us. Big things are gone. Big things are gone. Big things are gone. That's Shekinah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. See, our God is not impressed with our numbers. God is only impressed and moved by faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you think you don't have enough, when you think that God will not supply your needs, you are dealing more with numbers rather than a God who works above and beyond numbers. It is as if God says, oh yeah, you like numbers, numbers matter to you, David, then I, God, will fully step back and leave you to your own demise. See, church... Allow me to slow down here, say something. I, I know we live in a world where it's what you see. 
and the reality is what it is. But there is a kingdom way to think and to move. You've got to remind God of his word. The devourer will not devour you. You will remain. Huh? That you will be taken care of. We have to operate differently than other people. If we are named after God, if we are truly the church, we've got to say it's not about the numbers, God. It's about you. Hear this. God will leave you to your desires. Watch this. Until your desires leave you. Shh. How you mean, preacher? He'll give you just what you want. He'll give you just what you are aching for. But you tell God, I can't live it out. God, if you give me the... I've watched it over and over and over and over again. God said, really? Oh, step back. Go ahead. You seem to want that more than you want me. And then, guess what? You're left with you, and you leave you. You have to watch that. Verse 2, it says, for the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and number ye the people that I may know the number of people. He's in the mood now. Nah, I've got these mighty men. Let me see that man. How much people I got around here anyway? What's my numbers like? <laughs> God says, go, go and number them, since that's what you're interested in. And then David tells Joab to go and number the people. I thought this was magnificent. He trusted Joab to number the people. His prime fighter. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm got 37 mighty men. I wonder how many. Uh, I wonder how many men I'm got all together. Wow. I wonder what God has blessed me. How great. You know, so instead of singing, how great thou art, he was like, how great I am. How great am I? You see. David is interested in the numbers. David is interested in what he can see. David is not walking by faith or a firm belief in God. David wants to know what he has in his hands. He, he, he wants to know. Know coming from uh, the Hebrew word yada. To perceive and see. Find out and discern to understand. He, he wants to understand how many men, how many men does he have? He wants to understand. Listen, I have learned in life that when I don't understand, God, your hand is in it. Oh, come on. God, when I cannot, this thing don't make no sense. Okay, God, then you're up to something. Uh, God, I can't work it out. Damn, God, you must be about to work it out. Right now, David, his, his faith, his knowingness is in who he is. And church, what you must see clearly here is that David right here desires to know for himself and be in charge himself. Let me know what I'm working with. Let me know. Take a vote. You know, it's like, like the House of Congress. I want to impeach. How many I got? Well, it went from 80-something to 90-something. Not enough. I need to know the numbers. What a shame to miss the understanding that it must always be about God being in charge. Come on, somebody needs to get that. Some people, some, you're working too much up in here. Sometimes you got to empty out your mind. Say, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you get the mind of Jesus, you're going to think different. You're going to do different. You're going to have a different conclusion. After all, yes, ma'am. After all, David, it is God. Come on now. It is God who has been wonderfully charged with the care of your life since your youth, David. Did God miss it, David? When he, wait a minute now. When you were the rejected child, didn't God take care of you on the backside of the desert? When you weren't invited to the party, 
didn't God stop the party and say there will be no celebration until that next child, the youngest child, the rejected child, the rotty child, go get them. Wasn't God in charge when you were permitted to go and live with, with Saul? Bless you to go from the backside of the desert to the front side of the palace. I'm telling you, God has been in charge, David. See, we have to understand, at that young age, David could not have done it himself. So it is God that has been controlling him, his future, keeping him from dangers, allowing him to kill a lion, kill a bear, huh? allowing him to kill the Goliath, allowing him to escape the javelins being thrown by a skilled man named Saul. Don't you think that it was Saul's lack of skill? No, it was God's plan that when they want to take you out, I'm going to keep you. When they want to kill you, I'm going to make sure that you're yet arise. Oh, yeah, before Maya Angelou, before she said, still I rise, I got some news for you. You can look in the Bible, and you can see a man named David, a little boy named David, and he could say of himself, still I rise. They want to kill me, still I rise. They want to destroy me, still I rise. They want to take me out, still I rise. So David, why you counting numbers? Oh, that God doesn't operate according to numbers. No, God operates according to His sovereign will and your heart. When your heart is wrong, you miss the will of God. Look at verse three with me. And Joab, Joab, and Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord, look at deep, you know, all caps, now the Lord thy God add unto the people how many soever they be, an hundredfold, and that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why doth my Lord the king delight in this thing? See, you see. He understands at this point. He knows full, clear, and wow. As much as Joab is a killer, he knows something. Huh? What's interesting in this verse is that you have Joab. I hope you'll remember. Joab, the volunteer killer. Joab, the one who will kill first and think later. Joab, the one who will reason out to you why he had to murder this person. He actually speaks quite profoundly here. God will surely use the foolish. Joab, he is basically saying to David, telling David, why would we want to count how many people we have? Doesn't the record show that God has given us the victory over the years, no matter what our numbers were? Jesus. How you stand in semen? How you stand in Shekinah? Because it doesn't matter the numbers. Now, mind you, my numbers are good. I want them better but it doesn't matter the numbers. It matters the will of God. Joab is saying here, even if we had a little bit of numbers, with God on our side, you can multiply that number by 100 easily. This is Joab. Mr. Mr. No Faith, I kill Joab. Getting deeper, saying, no, no, back, back, David, God's got us, bro. Joab is speaking more wisdom here than David, yet David is king. And so Joab must bend to the will of King David. That takes me to point two, left to your own decision. Four, notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. 
And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. I could preach on him just saying Israel at that point and not saying Judah, but I'm going on. One king's decision will override the decision of whomever. That's why you got to make sure who you're under. So the process of the count begins, verses 5 through 8, listen. And they passed over Jordan and the pitch in a roar. On the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad and toward Jezreel. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of Tahatmid Hodsi. And they came to Dandron and about Zidon. And they came to the stronghold of Tyre and to the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites. And they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. Nine months and 20 days. Because you want to know how many. Why? He could have spent nine minutes and talked to God. No, but you want to do what you want to do. It's what you can manipulate, how you can be able to talk to God. And so he goes, he sends Joab and Joab and his captains and they go and they number the men. They go from one place to another. They start at a rower and they head down until they get to Jerusalem. Let me talk a little bit, very little about these places. The meanings of the names. A rower means ruins. Gilead means rocky region. Tatmin means lower lands. Danjon means purposeful judgment. Zidon means hunting. Tyra means a rock. Beersheba means well of a, the sevenfold oath. Jerusalem means teaching of peace. I just want to make this, this conclusion. I want you to note, according to the meanings of names, that he begins in the furthest place and finishes at home, okay? Now, the further away from home, the more dangerous the place is. Aurora is ruins. So he starts at ruins to a rocky region, to the lower lands, purposeful judgment, hunting a rock, well of the sevenfold oath, teaching of peace. When you decide to leave home, and it's not the will of God, you will find out that the places where you first start are rough. Nothing like home. There ain't no place like home. Because the enemy wants to get you way out there lost. But here's the comfort I have. That as far out as you may be, you're going to get back to Jerusalem. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You're going to get back home. And if we're not talking about a physical home, we're talking about a spiritual home. We're talking about peace of mind. That, that wherever your decision took you, you and you, you and you, you and your decision, that God will say, yep, you're going to experience some ruins, some rocky lands, some low lands, all types of things, but you're going to end up back at Jerusalem. Place of peace. Ain't no place like home, you know. What? Peace and quiet. You'll end up home. Mm -hmm. Here's another thought. With his chief fighter, this got me, with his chief fighter, Joab, away from Jerusalem for so long, what danger did David leave his own city exposed to? You got all young fighters going to the further ends of the earth, leaving home exposed. See that? See that self-will? Doing what you want to do? Hmm. Oh, the consequences of selfish and prideful choices. What was the point? Well, for God, the point was to one more time show David that he was operating out of the will of God. 
and that he had better get back on track. See, that's another thing. You know, people love to meet Ander. They want to be, be famous. Oh, I survived the ruins. <laughs> uh-huh, my Lord, the road was rocky. Oh, that. Look, get her. <laughs> Stop celebrating how y'all, no, half the time when you're going through rough things, it's not because it was God's will, it was your will. Don't try to make it a testimony now. I said something right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verses 9 and 10. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly, greatly, and that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Some things are lawful but not expedient. You did you really need to have the count of the people? But he gets a count. A million three hundred thousand men. He gets the number. Wait a minute, wait, 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 watch this. He gets, look, Kathy, he gets what he asked for. No, he don't want it. I thought they were the dream come true. I thought that was everything. I thought, what? No, you got him. You don't want him. His own heart condemns him. David said that he had done foolishly. Yet it was more than that. 11. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, hold on, church. Oh, Lord, only the people that are awake are going to get this. In the Bible, every leader has a seer. Shaman, I say. In the Bible, every kingdom... Got the prophets that sit at the gate. Ain't at the gate saying, gonna get a new car, gonna get a new husband. Well, husband. <laughs> don't get a new one, means you already got one. Don't get a husband. Um, I, I see money coming. Remember that famous set? All the people in Bermuda. That got me vaxxed, man. I know this was like 15 years ago. You know, you know. Every church you heard it, you know. Stand to your feet, everybody. Now, Ranger, just say money coming, money coming, money. That people are broke today. <laughs> money goeth. <laughs> it, it was something else. You get people hyped up on these sands yeah. because these are those lying prophets. Oh. Come to, let me tell you what they come to do. Just want to tickle your ear. Get, get you excited. You know, so you, you walk out. You walk out going, the, the prophet says something like this. Let me help some people out today. The prophet says, um, says to me, prophet says, I see the presence of the Lord all about you. God is going to do something wonderful in your life. I see the hand of the Lord upon you. That person hears this. I'm great. I've been called to preach. I cannot tell my pastor what to do. It's prefer I'm here to tell you how people want to hear a prophet. Come get this guy. Put the young man boys to work. The prophet is there. Hear me. The prophet is there or here to speak that which is profitable. Let me help you out. The only thing that can be profitable is that which has already been done, which is. That's the word of God. God knows what's going to happen. So the prophet must speak the mind and the heart of God. Unfortunately, what happens is they're speaking your heart and your mind. I, I, I lose this man, but why? Prophet told him we're going to be great. So they come back here, they ain't got to praise and worship. They just got to sit back because they're great. (laughs) 
Even prophets were trained. Every leader had a seer. Someone that could see the land and speak the heart of God concerning the land. Not concerning every individual. And usually the prophet, see that's <laughs> usually the prophet went to the, the, the main person. And going to every sister May, sister Sue, sister who do I do do? We ain't none of that. Because we ain't got time to deal. These people are not going to change the climate. But hey, if I speak to Premier David Park, or maybe at this day, if I speak to the governor, because I know who is in charge around here. But I'm going to know who is in charge. I'm going to know. Know who I should vote for. You might as well put the governor on the, on the, on the, on the slip, ballot, on the ballot. Mama England want to say something. I'm, I'm moving on. Here's what I need us to understand. Listen. God, if he needs to give a message to the land, he goes to the leader of the land. And he's going to send a message via someone who is in tune with him. And so in this scripture verse, David seer, David ain't got, David, how many seers David had? We ain't seen. His one. As a leader, you can't, everybody got to speak. When people speak prophetic in my life, they better speak right because I already know a lot of what God told me. So I ain't being tested, you are. David's prophetic voice from God. Let's know that he missed them all. See, oh, you don't want no, oh, no, pastor, no, pastor. Your job is to call, wish me well. I'm the best member. I'm just wonderful. No, sometimes you miss the mark. And I've got to be a correct, responsible leader and deal with that. Right? The best way that I can by the Holy Spirit. David sinned, he missed the mark. God sends the prophet not to congratulate David or tell David how great he was. God sends the prophet to communicate that he missed the heart of God. He had sinned. Get that? Ah! When you miss the heart of God, you sin. Right? One thing David knows, thank goodness, is that when he realizes his wrong, the next thing to do is seek forgiveness. How about that? I don't know why it's so difficult. People are wrong, wrong in what they do, and they're just going to stay wrong to some bolt of lightning hits them, to some, some, some type of prophetic voice saying, ah, oh, the Lord has now lifted you out of your pit. You're now, get out! Yeah. Suck my teeth. Just do right. Ain't nobody got to tell you to do right. Church, <laughs> hear me now. There is a price to pay when you sin. You do not get to skip into the sunset because your name is King David. No, 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 no. You planted a seed of pride. And since you are ruler over all of Israel and Judah, they will suffer because of your leadership choice. See? That's why leadership. I'm, I'm, I'm very tight when it comes to leadership. Some of you wonder why some people have left the ship. Don't you wonder why? Just know your leader was protecting the ship. I don't care if they think that the next T.D. Jakes and Sarah Lee Jakes and whoever Jakes, I don't care who they think they are. <clears throat> I don't care if they're going away, get a degree or whatnot. See him in this. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Mm -hmm. I'm protecting you. So David now knows he's planted the seed. Now he got some choices. Got some choices. <laughs> you know, some people think, oh man, I missed the mark. Okay, um, I see and I messed up. Okay, well, I'm going to go to church. I'm just going to dance my way out. Dance my way out. Oh, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. You know, like you're skipping with God. Lord, you're good. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to quote, put as much quotes on Facebook this week. I'm, I'm going to get. No, 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 no. Consequences. <laughs> look, look, look at it. 12, 13. 
Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I will offer three things. Choose one of them, that I may do it unto thee. Now, you know, some people are like, well, house, car, maybe he's getting another wife. Maybe he's getting a camel. Maybe he's getting land. Now, let's, let's see what God does. 13. So Gad, the, the seer, the, the, the prophet, so Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or will there be three days pestilence in thy land? No advice and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. That's your choices, A, B, and C. Seven years of famine, three months of running from your enemies, or three days of pestilence throughout the land. Hmm. Look at David. <laughs> David refuses to choose and actually makes a brilliant statement right here. See, oh, I've learned to do this myself. <laughs> he says, God, I cannot, I will not choose from these three. Instead, I will leave it to you to choose for me. Lord, have mercy. In other words, I th I th I've learned my lesson. I won't even choose. <laughs> you know what he's depending on? What we depend on every day. <laughs> he's depending on the mercy of God. <laughs> huh? God, if I make a choice, I may make the wrong choice again. <laughs> God, if I make the choice, I may make a flesh choice. <laughs> but God, if I step back <laughs> and say, God, your will be done. <laughs> Nevertheless, not my will, <laughs> but God, your will be done. God, if I do that, I believe you will have mercy. God, you choose. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. I'm not even worthy to choose. I'm king, but I'm not worthy. I'm in control of the whole land, but you know what? I see what my last choice did. God, have mercy on me. So sad, so done. God releases three days of pestilence upon the land. Now watch this. This thing got me. He releases three. What I'm trying to show you, listen. It's the hand of God when we really are sorry. <laughs> Siemens made mistakes, errors. Come on now. Nah. But we got to be really sorry. God releases three days of pestilence over the land. And he stops short of Jerusalem. <laughs> huh? He stops short of the city of peace. <laughs> In other words, you've had to endure, you're going to have to endure because of your mistakes. But if you let me do what I need to do, you're going to have some peace afterwards. Peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul. If you just hold your peace, I'm going to get you to peace. I'm going to lose out the consequences of your bad decision. But the hand of God, the mercy of God, stops short of Jerusalem. The city of peace. That's why, listen, listen. Greater than the favor of man. Better than any job is peace of mind. Yeah. 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 Huh? I promise you, if, so, if some this is a big if, big if, if some loses, I will still have peace of mind. You yeah, shush. Huh? 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 I, I tell you what, I want to go further because I want to help real church people. I'm going to help real church people. Watch this, watch this. If the gay pride happens, I will still have peace of mind. Oh! Let me go further. Let me go further. If the governor handcuffs the politicians and they pass the same-sex marriage thing for real, for real, 
Guess what? They can't uncuff me from God, so I will still have peace of mind. Oh, I'm in a house of safety. I'm at home. I'm in relationship with God. And nobody, nobody can take that away. You see, they can do outward things, but nobody can touch my heart. Nobody can do for me what God can do. That's why the child of God, that's why the saint of God, you ought to know that you're in a sweet spot because nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. No matter what goes on, on your jaw, in your home no matter where it is I promise you that at the end of the battle at the end of the war at the end of the difference at the end of all of the debating that you can still have peace of mind Lord have mercy that if you're looking for peace it's in the presence of God if you need peace it's in the presence of God if you want real peace it's in the presence of God I don't want you seeking peace from anyone else but the one who who said that Jerusalem is the place where my presence will be my temple will be my ark will be Shamanase. stop seeking people seek God's peace you go ahead seek people People going to disappoint you. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. Somebody saw me. Matter of fact, First Lady Thomas saw me. She said, twice. I went and got some lamb chops at Jamaican Grill Friday. So I saw her. Then I had to go late night shopping last night here in Bay. Saw her again. And she said to me, she says, I'm just sharing you. <laughs> she said, um, I said, oh, two days in a row, that's good. You know how I, and she said, Pastor Seaman, got you all, you're all listening to you, look at you. <laughs> she said, um, she said, Pastor Seaman, she said, I don't know how you do, you're just looking younger and younger. <laughs> it's like I felt just a whole, because I'm a scientist, so like I fre felt fresh blood just come all through my body. I just said, well, I knew what it was. I said, it's the presence of the Lord. It's, it's the joy of the Lord. Listen, that's what, I'm not going to stay mad. I'm going to stay mad for a little bit, but no. I mean, I was driving down thinking. I said, I'll go. this is when I hit past um, Whitney, because I've got a photographic memory, so I see things. And I was by the, the post office box. I, I weren't thinking about that, but I just, for some reason, I said, yeah. I said, Maria. You know, they say it takes less muscles to smile. And, and yeah, then to front. So I said, oh, so the more I smile, I got to keep the wrinkles away. You know, I just, I'm just trying to help somebody. Then I did say, I'm going to come fast to you. I said, no, nah, when I look up in my pulpit, when I'm editing, I better see some smiles. That was my next sentence to myself. So I'm just telling you. It's something about the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you. And so don't let, here, this is what I'm saying, don't let anybody take your peace. Come on, come on. You can't put a monetary value on the quality and the worth of peace. <laughs> so God, he released these three days of pestilence upon the land and stopped short of Jerusalem. God won't touch your peace. You keep him, her, in perfect peace. His mind is staying on him. Yes, he will. This is powerful. For God will now leave David with a forever thought that, this is the other thing, they all suffered because of me, and I didn't. That's powerful, too. Because really, he would have wanted, well, let me suffer with you. God said, I'm not even going to permit that. You be guilty. Oh, this is this stuff's deep. You, you know, because if he suffered with me, he said, I'm with you in suffering. He said, No, I'm not, no, no, you stand back and see what you've done. I'm going to help somebody else here watch it now. The, the angel of God ended up, 70,000 men were killed during that three days. This is a horrible mark on his leadership reign. Now, here's a sentence 
Why is it, this blew me away. I edited this sentence, I could tell you this morning. I read it over, I said, hmm. Why is it that at the end, so many leaders destroy their own legacies? That team blew me away. And it just hit me this morning, so I'm, I'm, I'm always very honest. You know, I just spout check things on a Sunday, but God said, this is what leaders tend to do. They're into the numbers, they built the big church, they've done this and that, they've got people serving them, and then what happens? They end up making a mockery of their own leadership. I see, I learned these. Now, I have knowledge of this, you see? That's why I try to empower young people. That's, that's why I make sure to always serve. Because I can't fall in this trap right here. Takes me to point number three. Left to your own demonstration. This is what's left now. Verse 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. God demonstrated mercy to David and the people of Jerusalem. The sword that had devoured so many, bam, bam, throughout the whole land, blood in the streets, blah, 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 stopped short of Jerusalem. That's another thing. And I often prayed this with the girls as they grew up. I don't know whose company they're in all the time. I don't know what drink they're taking up, the outdoor party, what soda, or who put. You don't know. But I say, God, your hand of protection, that go while others will be taken out, stop short of my Jerusalem. Come on, mothers. That's the way you got to pray for your children. Come on, you pray for your grandchildren. There have been others are being taken out, falling. God, stop, stop short of the angel of death. Stop short. God Almighty. Now, hmm. the sword which has devoured so many ceased at Jerusalem. So let me tell you this. If you're a praiser, if you're a worshiper, if you have the peace of God in your heart, all the devastation that you may see and experience will stop short and not touch your peace. That's right. I don't care what they try to do. You, you still better have your song. You still better have your praise. You better still have your worship. Huh? That's an unusual anointing. Don't think that it only happens in David's day. You ought to go around this week. If it's on your job, wherever it is, and the enemy comes out, you go like, whoa, 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 ain't going to touch me. Can't touch this, huh? I got peace. What? Peace like a river flowing. Understand this. The place where God stops the hand of the angel of death is the place where David desires to build an altar. Here's a major lesson. I highlighted it in my writing. Watch it. Wherever and whenever God comes through for you, you ought to stop right there and build an altar. Come on now. Hallelujah. Even the altar in your heart and give God thanks. Deaconess Nancy, can I get you to join me right here? I feel like preaching to you for a moment. Deaconess Nancy, has God come through for you? Can you picture it in your mind? Yeah. Can you see how he's come through for yeah. you? Well, can you build an altar right now and give God some praise and give God some worship and give God all that he's due? My God is worthy. My God is worthy. And let me tell you something. Everybody in here ought to be able to stop. Think about God. Think about what God has done and build you an altar and give God some praise and give God some worship. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a mighty good God. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, he done it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Ebasha. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. God did it. Nobody else could do it. God did it. Nobody else would do it. God did it. Some people see you suffering and they'll walk on by. But can I tell you that we have a God? He'll never just walk on by. He'll stop and he'll see about you. God will make sure that you understand that you've always been on his heart, that you are his beloved, that he has you on his heart. He's going to come through for you. That's where you built your altar. So, 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 hear me, hear me, church. This week, we don't know what this week holds, but we know who knows what this week holds. So whatever happens this week, and as soon as you want to complain and belly ache, instead of doing that, just begin to build an altar. Oh! God, I thank you. God, you're greater than this. God, you're above this situation. God, I thank you, God. I still got peace. I still want to praise you. I still want to love you. I still want to... See, see... See, that's, that's, by the way, what we're experiencing right now, you know, and y'all jump right in it, <laughs> is what we call Pentecost. Yeah. That's why they never knew who we were. Yeah. That's why they didn't understand us. <laughs> and we didn't make no sense to the normal church. Yeah. How are you people in your lack of finances? How are you people in your lack of education talking about how great God is? Because yeah. we understood <laughs> that the greatness of God <laughs> is not in the numbers of my bank account. But it is in the fact that he is God. Yet will I praise him. He is God. He is God. He is God. He is God. So listen, let me wind it on. I really only have like five minutes or less. Let's, let's work this. Watch this. He's at the threshing floor of Aruna. Aruna. No. Watch this. This is going this to mess some people up. The man who earned the land wanted to give David the lamb for free. You know, he like saw the king coming and like, take the lamb. Okay. You know, that's what you would do. I mean, if Premier David Brett come around here, he ain't going to sit in my seat, but I'm going to say, you know, scoot over, you got something, you know, see what he, where he wants to sit. You know. So, the man wanted to give the land to David free. I want you to follow me with this, because this is going to set somebody free. <laughs> Watch this. Yet David understood that when you miss the mark, you have to pay a price. When you sin, you don't get a free pass. God doesn't love you so much that he winks at your sin. Even as king, you do not get a free pass. So David paid money. He paid money. He paid money for the land. David understood that if, if I'm remorseful enough, then this process must now cost me something. I could give so many examples here. I'm going to try not to hit one that hits somebody in here. Um, if I went and had a baby, you know, I would have to be younger because it ain't happening now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come out of here. What? Come here. Yeah, you want to you wanna help, help preacher preach? Everybody say, help pastor out of... Come stand here. You, you ain't sorry. You ain't sorry. You ain't sorry. Uh, Don, they're talking about, talking about uh, Hannah. Who is he? And Sarah, right? Mm -hmm. So if, do you want me to pray that the spirit of Hannah and Sarah and rest God upon rest upon you? Rest upon you. <laughs> rest upon you. No, Pastor. Right, don't mess up my sermon. Go on. For a copy of this sermon in its entirety, Please email me at swim at God bless. Blessings, blessings.